Next step is to figure out exactly how much this business is worth. Uh, we're going to be solving for the enterprise value, which is different from the equity value. Enterprise value is the entire value we would pay for the entire business if we were acquiring it. So let's say the, the equity value the, uh, is, is the number of stock outstanding times the stock price. Let's say it's a million dollars to buy all of the stock. But when you buy all of the stock, you suddenly own the entire balance sheet. When you buy all the stock, you own it. So you own the cash on hand. You also own the debt. And what happens when you own debt, you need to pay it back. So if a company has $1,000 in debt, and we buy it for we buy the stock for a thousand dollars. We've paid two thousand dollars. We've paid a thousand dollars for the stock, and we've also paid a thousand dollars because we need to pay back that debt. Uh, we don't need to do it immediately, but we're effectively uh, uh, taking on that amount of debt, and that's actually you know value lost to us. So the enterprise value is the amount of value we would pay for the entire company as a whole, whereas the equity value we would solve for if we were only buying a couple shares of stock. We're not really taking on everything else. We're going to figure out how much how much the equity value of this is divided by the number of shares, and that would get us the share price. So the discounted cash flow method basically says, if the theory is, the sum of the cash available to the investors for the rest of the business's life is the value I, I you know, pay today. And there's a few things that go into this. One is you need to calculate the discounted cash flow. So you need to calculate how much free cash, I should write free cash here, it's really free cash flow. Um, you really need, you need to calculate what the free cash flow is every year from now until forever. Um, so you need to do that. Uh, free cash, again, is, is the cash that's available to investors. It's not taken up by things like capital expenditures or working capital, and you'll see those adjustments in a second. So as we do that, the next thing we need to take into account is time value of money. Uh, money later is worth less than money today. I want my money today. I don't want it 10 years from now. So if you're going to give it to me 10 years from now, you know you need to pay me more. Uh, so to, to, so um, we're going to have a discount rate that takes every year out and discounts it back to the current year. So we know what to pay today for these cash flows that could come in 2018 or 2019 or 2030 or whatever year you're watching this, 2040. Um, so, uh, so that's the time value of money that comes in. Okay, so how do we figure out the free cash flow? Well, we take these formulas. We take, we take the, form, the typical formula is... You, know, you take EBIT, you add back some of the non-cash expenses, you subtract some of the you know, cash capital costs, and then you get to an unlevered free cash flow. This is the formula. You can look it up. This isn't a you know, lesson on uh, what the formula is or why. This is how to do it in a model. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to link um, the EBIT to my income statement from the other sheet. I'm going to link... Uh, depreciation to my cash flow statement. We don't have any amortization. Um, we know that from, uh, from our building the, the model. Um, I'm going to make this red. We do have CapEx. Let's link that to, again, our cash flow statement. Uh, we don't have any additions to intangible. That's basically CapEx for uh, intangible assets. Capital expenditures is spent on tangible assets like a car. Intangibles is like uh, uh, IP, intellectual property. So if we add to intellectual property, that would be here. Um, and then we need to uh, add the difference in working capital because if our working capital is expanding, then we uh, we need more cash. If it's, if it's contracting, we gain cash. So let's take this. So we're going to minus any increase in working capital. Where's our working capital schedule? I have to change the sign on this. All right, so now I'm going to copy these over. And I'm also going to color these green because we're linking in from another sheet. And I want to know that these are not things I can just play around with. They are linking from another sheet. Okay. So um, we also need the tax rate. And we're going to do something. I'll show you what it is in a second. Uh, tax rate. This is a percent. 
and it's also green. And then sales, sometimes I like to pull it in just so I can see it. I'm going to forget that for now. Um, all right, so let's calculate the tax taxes on this. Actually, I'm only going to do it for the out years. And the reason we're taking taxes before interest is because this is unlevered free cash flow. Again, you can look it up, unlevered free cash flow. But basically, we want the cash available to all investors, not just the equity holders. Um, we haven't paid back our interest yet, so this is cash of it. Because we're doing this before interest, we haven't paid back that interest yet. After you pay back interest, the rest of the cash is available for um, equity holders. But before interest, it's available to everybody because we still need to pay back the interest in our debt. Um, again, the two types of uh, shareholders, I guess, are debt holders and equity holders. So we want the cash before we pay back, pay back both of those. So we have our tax-affected EBIT. We add back depreciation, add back amortization. We subtract capital expenditures because that's an expense. And our working capital is decreasing, so we're actually going to increase it here. So our free cash flow, unlevered, is this. Now, we have an issue here. I think we might have linked the wrong. Yep, linked the wrong one. All right, so I'm going to take this, link it here, and then pass it this way. Okay, I'm just going to make all of this deleted. I'm not going to do historicals. I'm going to fill this in black. All right, great. So we have our unlevered free cash flow every year going out to 2019. So we can calculate a cash flow to 2019, but how do we calculate past 2019? Well, we call this a terminal value. It's at some point when the, when the business has stopped growing um, at an exponential rate, and it's gonna grow at the same rate into perpetuity, we can make an estimate on what the business is worth in 2019, one of two ways. One is we can say, there's something called the perpetuity formula, which we're gonna use, or the terminal value formula, which we're gonna use. Uh, the other thing you can do is do an EBITDA multiple or some multiple to find the value of the business in 2019. And you use that as sort of a valuation metric. If in 2019, what would someone pay for this based on this EBITDA multiple? That's the value of the cash flow going on. We're going to use the terminal value, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, I just found a mistake I made. I hard-coded this. So this should not be, I'm not hard-coded, I uh, put the dollar signs around that. That shouldn't be, that's not right. Um, so I need to do that. It makes my cash flow look a little bit better. Uh, copy that formula back over. Great, okay, so now we're gonna do the terminal value. I added a couple columns down here, one for unlevered free cash flow, which we did before. Now we're gonna do terminal value. This is just a formula, you can look it up. Uh, to calculate this, we need the weighted average cost of capital, which is our discount rate. Again, you should know this uh, from our videos, but you can look it up, it's discount rate or weighted average cost of capital and the terminal value growth rate. This is the growth rate at which the cash flow will grow forever steadily. Uh, usually it's around what inflation is or what GDP growth is, um, which you know we'll call it about two and a half percent. Not inflation, sorry, real GDP growth. I'll uh, we'll call it about two and a half percent. All right, so the formula is the last year's cash flow times one plus the growth rate. So it's really the next year's cash flow over the discount rate minus the growth rate. Um, and you can look this up just to make sure that uh, you're comfortable with it, but that's that's what it is. Um, we add those together, and this is the total cash flows in all of those years. Now what we do is we take a discount factor. Um, this discount factor is going to be what do we discount it for? And this is also another formula that you can memorize, but it's equal to 1 over uh, 1 plus the discount rate to the power of the number of years it is from today. Again, this is time value of money. It's basic finance. You can learn this later. Uh, and then uh, present value of cash flows is next. And we're just going to take that discount factor, multiply it by. You can also use the NPV formula, but a lot of people use it wrong. So I like to do it this. Do it like this. Um, all right, so these are the present value of those cash flows. And then net present value equals the sum of all of those cash flows. So the net present value of this business 
is 3 million. Actually, I'm going to move this down here. $3 million is the net present value uh, of this business. So this is really $3 billion. Um, now we would need to figure out what that is after de uh, net debt and uh, divide that by a uh, amount of shares outstanding to get to an equity value because our enter this is our enterprise value. This is the value of the whole business, cash available to all investors before debt, before equity. So this is the enterprise value, the value of the equity plus the debt. So if we subtract out the debt, we will find out what the equity value is, and then we can get to a share price. We'll do that in a second. All right, one thing to note here is that uh, my weighted average cost of capital is 10%, and my terminal value is really a huge percent of this value here. So I've got $4 million in my terminal value. Um, this is a lot of money to be banking on growth for. So uh, I'm not going to get this for a while, and at least five years. So uh, having a large percentage of your terminal value makes this weighted average cost of capital a really important calculation, and this is a really hard thing to get to. Um, this formula is a formula called the CAPM that will help you get there, a CAPM. But again, watch. Watch when I change this just to 12%. Suddenly the value is 2.3 million. That's like a third of the, a quarter of the value basically out of commission just because I made that 12%. It's 11%. So it's like each percent is $300,000 worth of present value for this business. You're going to be really careful about this number and do a sensitivity with a data table at the end to make sure that you know you are not in trouble if this changes so significantly. All right, so to get this uh, share price, we're going to get the enterprise value, which is the same thing as the sum of all the cash flows into the future. Uh, we have no debt. We already did that. Um, we can link it to the last. If we did, we'd link it to the balance sheet. Um, we could still do that, but there's no debt. Uh, cash and cash equivalents, we do have. We're going to link it to our old balance sheet. Today's value, because we're buying it today. This is the value of the company today. So we're linking it to the most recent cash balance. Um, and you sum these together and you get to a market capitalization. This is how much the sum of all of the shares are worth. Now we take it to a shares outstanding. We got this from the 10K. At the end of the year, when all of this stuff was true, we had... Uh, 18,908 shares outstanding and so if you take a total market capitalization divided by the shares outstanding you get a stock price or target price of $168.39 now what does that mean uh, that means that if you know the stock is less than that you should buy it if we're right and if the stock is currently trading for higher than that you should sell it so let's take a look at what the uh, current share price is it's $158.24. We're saying the stock has an implied value of $168.39. So that means if you know we believed every single number in this model, which I absolutely do not, I would you know maybe buy the stock. There's a little bit of room to move. Um, you know if this was a big difference, if if our target price was more like 200, and uh, this is you know 158. That would mean a you know, really, really interesting perspective, uh, really interesting stock prospect if we actually believe our financial model. Um, getting to the point where you can believe your financial model is the hardest part. This is actually the easy part, believe it or not. Uh, great, so we've got a share price. Um, we can also value this a couple different ways, too, to make sure that we're not so far off in our assumptions, like a double check. We're going to do multiple valuation next.